I'm Sam Slater from Fun Calibre, and today I've been joined by Joe Curtis, who's manager of the City of London Investment Trust. Hi, Joe. Hello. Good morning. So, UK companies, and in particular larger companies, have been unloved for a long time now. But with the US and other growthier parts of the world having had a wobble so far this year, do you think the UK, it's time for it to shine again? Yes, the UK has been unloved, and um, until very recently, it's been underperforming a lot of the other world stock markets, partly the composition of our index, where we have fewer of the big technology stocks like sort of Microsoft or Apple in our, in our index, very few, in fact. Um, and, you know, while our index is quite heavy in companies like oil companies or, or mining companies, um, and so there's been quite a big um, switch recently um, with, um, you know, with, with inflation picking up. It's actually to the benefit of the oil companies and mining companies, um, uh, whilst actually uh, to counter inflation, interest rates are starting to go up globally. And this somewhat undercuts the valuation of some of these sort of high growth stocks, which are very highly rated in terms of their future profitability. But if the current interest rate starts to go up, that actually technically um, uh, has an adverse effect on, on their valuation. So, um, I mean, I think there are a number of reasons why the UK has been out of favour. I mean, it could be sentiment going right back to the Brexit referendum, you know, whatever we might feel about Brexit, you know, it wasn't um, kind of particularly applauded um, in global um, by global investors. Um, so that there are kind of variety of factors, and it can be said that UK stocks look cheap, even on a light flight basis, even if you take out the sort of absence of these big high tech stocks, even our kind of oil companies look cheap compared to the American oil companies and so on and so forth. So, but it is very encouraging. Last couple of months, UK has really picked up and has um, actually been performing the best of the major stock markets. So um, I'm hoping there's a bit of catch up taking place. And you mentioned there about the raising, rising interest rates. Is that good or bad for dividends? Uh, well, it, I think it's in, in the first instance, it, it can sort of symbolise that the economy is very strong, which it is at the moment. I mean, actually, we've had um, a very strong year for growth in the UK. We GDP was up over 7% in 2021, which is obviously a bounce back from when it uh, crashed in 2020. Uh, but I think, um, so the fact that growth is, is so strong in the um, in the stock market is kind of good for company profitability, which is obviously feeds through to good dividends. So in the first instance, it's, it's probably a sort of as a coincident indicator that it, things are quite good for dividends. And indeed, dividends have been picking up um, markedly. We've, we're having a much better uh, year for dividends, and we having we've had special dividends which we've ex enjoyed in City of London from companies like Rio Tinto in the mining sector, and the banks have started paying their dividends again um, after not paying them in 2020. So you know it's a, been a much better period for dividends. But the only sort of note of caution is obviously with interest rates going up, if it ultimately triggers a recession or a downturn, then that that kind of going looking forward will be will, will not be will be negative for dividends. So um, I think just in the short term, it, it's good. But if it kind of, the longer it carries on, if the authorities need to put the brakes on to the extent that brings the economy into recession, then that, that would be a negative. And of course, the reason the interest rates are going up is because inflation is so high at the moment. What kind of impact does those do those rising prices have on UK equities? Well, I think it uh, the Rise in inflation obviously means that um, interest rates are going up and bond yields. So what I was saying earlier, but I think the kind of rate at which um, people discount future profitability um, has changed, and that, that has a kind of negative overall effect on on valuation. But I think within the stock market, there are kind of certain sectors that are clearly benefiting. I mean, the oil companies, the oil price is now above ninety dollars a barrel, and this is obviously very beneficial for. The big oil companies and Shell and BP are, you know, big um, holdings in City London's portfolio. And we've also got Total, the French-based um, international oil company. The mining companies. I mean, the iron ore price has been been very strong. And there are um, other areas within the portfolio, like real estate investment trusts, um, and in fact, the utilities, the water utilities, have got a lot of inflation protection. And you know, the defence contractor BA Systems, which is another. Big holding for City of London, along with the water stocks and um, real estate investment trusts that land securities. You know, so we, you know, I think within the portfolio, I can see quite a few companies with, with inflation protection of, of um, different sorts. So, um, so I think it is, uh, you know, some companies are better protected from 
rising inflation than others. I mean, others, you know, when they have weaker pricing power, they can't pass, pass on cost um, inflation to in terms of their own pricing. I mean, obviously, they're going to be um, seriously affected in a negative sense from inflation. So uh, I think it does require kind of um, astute stop selection to, to, to really pick out the winners and losers in this environment. And when it comes to BP, obviously, with their profits going up so much, there has been talk of this windfall tax. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that would be a negative. I mean, BP is headquartered historically as a British company. It's headquartered in the UK, but it's very global. I mean, it has interests in the North Sea, but its biggest um, province is um, in, in America, actually. They're very, they made some big acquisitions over the years in the US, and they're very big in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, they're really a, a global company. And I think if we um, kind of put windfall taxes on companies that are you know, headquartered and listed in Britain, but a global, uh, in the end, they're going to move to up to other markets. So I think it would be a very much a short-term fix. And in addition, BP is spending a lot of money, in fact, it's directing a very large proportion of its um, uh, profits and capital spending to um, renewable energy. And they're trying to pivot the whole organisation. Um, they want to build up, become a major force in renewable energy. So, um, you know, to the extent we kind of tax them, then that, that's going to dissipate the, those effects. So I think it would be um, a really poor signal by the UK and it would make um, you know, us seem a pretty unattractive um, home for kind of global companies who would certainly be a bit be marked against us for sure. And one of the big things of last year was all of the merger and acquisition activity in the UK. Is that something you expect to continue in 2022? Well, yes, we were talking a moment ago about how cheap the UK markets um been looking and I think the evidence for this has been the large number of takeovers and um, we have a very open system for corporate control in the UK stock market and um, and you know the shareholders own the companies and if the price is good enough uh, then 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 the company gets taken over and we've seen that um, and the government rarely interferes unless there are national defense issues security issues or, or competition issues um, and I think um, you know we've seen a large number of takeovers they were lost couple of years and it, it simply demonstrates how cheap the UK is and they come from a combination. I mean it's either from foreign companies um, you know using their more expensive greater paper to buy our, our cheaper stocks or from private equity which is sort of private funds which are not quote in the stock market own kind of companies. And actually City of London we held William Morrison the supermarket group um, which had been a very good company over the years but it suffered a dull share price from spite um, operating very well. Um, over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, so um, they actually received two private equity bids. So it was a sort of bidding war uh, between two, two different groups. And um, in the end, um, it was taken over. And it, it was sad to see a company of Morrison's quality leave the portfolio, leave the stock market. But on the other hand, you know, the price was well ahead of where it had been trading before. And, you know, given that two private equity groups were fighting over it, we had the feeling it was a pretty good outcome in terms of the price it went for and we were able to reinvest some of the proceeds back into Tesco's which is an existing holding so we kept our um we kept a good weighting in the in this UK food retail sector. That's really interesting. Thank you very much. Pleasure. And if you'd like to find out more about the City of London Investment Trust, please go to funcaliber.com.